I got when I got shot. I, got, I caught some lead in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> I caught some lead. Suddenly, now you got shot by the detective, of, though. Yeah. You've been talking for two hours, right now. Now he found out you caught some lead. Shoot that a pit bull instead. Hit Fucking him. Friendly what fire. What happened? What happened? We were over in. Uh, <laughs> And we're back. We're back here in the palatial states and uh, Bill Cannon, my partner in law enforcement in Austin, New York. Our guest this week is uh, Detective Pat Porteous. Oof. First grade detective, <laughs> 27 years on the NYPD, but is collecting a 30-year pension because of his uh, three years of bought back time from when he was swab- swabbing decks. Is that in how you the call Navy. It? <laughs> so you can... <laughs> You must have fit really nice in the uh, He was lights, swabbing right? Porteous to the yeah. deck. Do you have a use line? <laughs> what, what is it? Request for it. <laughs> Porteous would be like, Captain requesting permission to go to shore. <laughs> he used to get on the wall like this and stick his ass out. <laughs> what, like the Titanic? <laughs> You're denied, Porteous. <laughs> Request the liberty. Fun times to be had. So you guys worked together yeah. in, uh, you were not in, with uh, in Homicide, two, three, right? No, in the 2-3 squad. I was there for five years in the 2-3 squad. So Bill was your boss for five years? Yeah, yeah. We had a good time. He had the... Uh, the rip. He used to have the cone, the uh, traffic cone. And he used to come in and he used to do a stand-up in the office. Uh-huh. He used to go around the room on each guy. He had certain guys that he liked uh, nailing. Uh-huh. So I was like his audience back then. All members of the 2-3 squad. Oh, <laughs> now now he you do this. <laughs> it was a traffic cone. And you walk around the office yelling at uh, you uh-huh. know, different jokes out of it and stuff. Uh-huh. That's great. Sounds like so When much you fun. caught the guy with the stuff on his nose, the... Uh, Coming from the beach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was a detective there who surf. thought he was like a surfer, you know. <laughs> Comes into work like 45 minutes late because he lived all the way out in Long Beach. Uh-huh. And he's got that white shit on his nose, you know. No, so he went sur- oh, he went surfing that morning. Yeah, yeah. So he'd be like, you were working 45 minutes late. And then he'd have the balls to go down and work out for two no, hours. Was it right? inspections there? Yeah, or yeah inspections was there. And he, he was always like 60, 70 cases in the hole. Yeah, yeah. So he walks in late and I go... I don't say his name. I said, Inspections is here. He turned like white because uh-huh. he knew he was like 60 or 70 cases uh-huh. in the hole. Next thing I know, he's typing like Evelyn Wood, you uh-huh. know? And uh, <laughs> that was after he came back from working out. After he came back from working out for an hour and a half. <laughs> I, I I used to be I used to be holding like sixty cases too. Oh, you were one of those guys. Yeah. I mean, you could get the boss in trouble, you know. Okay, I used to hide them in the um we used to have a drop ceiling in the two six. And I knew that when I left for the day or for the weekend, if I swung out, that there would be bosses or somebody going through my cases and leaving me notes. So I used to take the cases out. I used to, put, we used to hide them in the drop ceiling. <laughs> but then when they went to the DD5 system on the computer, oh, you couldn't do it. that anymore. Finished. That game was up. We, yeah. had, we had a guy uh, that used to do the 494 every morning. And he used to close them out right off the uh, 494. He wouldn't even assign them to you. <laughs> my team was at least... Uh, we caught the least amount of cases. Because he used to screen them. But then when the boss came in, like the boss would be going through it and like, yo, uh, uh, so-and-so, what's up with this grand larceny? Ah, that's, that's a dead end. It's close. It's uh, B-15. Don't worry about it. it yeah, but great. You know, patrol's posture. B-15 they was to- what? It was like uh, can close ID? patrols. Yeah, can or ID uh-huh. or something like that. The patrol left it open for us. Patrol used to want to leave everything open. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. I had a detective works. once told me when I first got to the squad, he goes, when in doubt, close it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, we had a lieutenant like that, too, a female. She was like, hey, close this shit out. I don't care what you put. Just close it out today. And she, uh-huh. She'd give you like five cases to close out. You put whatever you want because Comstat was coming right, up right. or something. Boom, boom, boom. You close it out, you get rid of five cases. Some weeks I would say Amnesty International is here at the precinct. Any yeah. reasonable five, I'll let you close it. You know? But what I used to do was I used to put my um, my case in once with my sergeant. And then if you gave it back to me with a handful of stickies, because, you know, listen, I'm going to close I'm close, the I'm closing the case out. Right. You yeah. know, I, I, I feel I did a good investigation. I'm a detective. You promoted me. You should. And then a whole bunch of the ticker go and put right in the bottom of the drawer. And then that th- that thing would come out when I had a when that boss went on vacation. 
Take all the stickies off, do another closing five with the current date, and put it back. Let the next guy close them. We had a guy in the, in the uh, two three, a sergeant. He just got there, and he was sticky happy, everything. All uh-huh. over the front of the case, right? Uh-huh. So he used to have, like, Friday and Saturday off. So we, went, <laughs> we went in there, we tattooed his whole office with those yellow stickies. We put up about 3,000 of them all over the place. <laughs> you know what I no, used to do? No, we were dying. When he walked in and saw that, it was so you funny. You know what I used to uh, do? He really it? pissed people off? No, he was all right. He was pissed at first, but he was cool. With I, would write, I would write right on the five. And that would really piss oh, people yeah. off, man. Because you couldn't get rid of it. Yeah. I'd write right on the five. Do this, do that, do this. And the guy would get really Well, pissed. we had one guy before they even went to computers. We were doing it on the IBMs, the yep. uh, typewriters. Yeah. This guy would have a five, the same five loaded up in the typewriter for about two weeks. <laughs> He'd do like a line a week, you know? For, <laughs> but for he was our, off doing every other thing in the precinct. You for know? our listening uh, audience, a five is a complaint follow-up. Every time a detective takes a statement, talks to someone, they have to do a complaint follow-up. It's yeah, there was DD a, five. you had like, yeah. uh, you had to have your first five in by the, the second day, second yeah. five in uh, by the fifth day, the third five by 10 days. Yeah, and then they, they when they went to that uh, Omni thing, everybody in one PP could pull up your case and read all your, your fives. Yeah. It was crazy. It changed when everything. They, that's when they a, started that's a doing security that. issue, too. Because what if your brother's wanted for a murder and you work for the police department? And you pull up that precinct's case on your brother, and now you know what they're doing, what they got on them. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's, I never thought of that. But yeah, that it's it wasn't. It was really. I a know security a cop problem. that got locked up for that. He was in the army or the Marine Corps. He was actually a cop up in Harlem. He was a really good cop, and apparently, he one of his boys that he was in the military with did a homicide somewhere like in Philadelphia or something. And he called this guy on the phone and he was telling him, you know, months later, he was like, yeah, I killed the guy and all this shit. So the guy never said nothing. <laughs> but the, fed, the feds were listening on the guy's phone. Oh, they were wow. up on his oh phone. My God. And they wind up coming up and grabbing this guy and they locked him up. Wow. That guy was a great cop too. He used to be in the uh, housing unit up by the polo grounds. So that's how I met him. I used to make a lot of calls and I would meet him down in ECAB and we'd be down there bullshitting and hanging out. But uh he was a good cop. I worked with a guy who uh asked somebody somebody that he knew was like had a mob connect or something like that. But they were they were neighbors in this neighborhood in Long Island. So uh they were friends. They used to do the barbecue together, they grew up together. And he gave him a, a plate to run, but that plate was flagged by uh, the feds. Oh, yeah, um, man. When he ran the plate, it came back. So um, no more going on the boat with your friend anymore. So, no associating with known felons, right? Yeah. that was the, That's an interesting thing about the job, too. It's like it puts you in a position where, you know, you're always around cops and bad guys. And then, you know, you, you can't be with bad guys off duty, but that's some right. of them throw the best parties. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's true. It's true. They hang out in the same bars. Detective Pat, what do you miss the most about being a detective, if if anything? Uh, I miss the uh the good cases, the good investigations, the collars and stuff. It's it's always nice to make a collar, you know, when some old lady gets beat up or gets dragged, right. gets a pocketbook stolen. Sometimes those collars are nicer than homicide collars, you know. Yeah, you feel like you're doing gratitude. something. Remember the remember the time you, myself, and a detective. I'll just say as little red. It was a month before I retired, and we all went out in an unmarked car, and we said, "Let's just feel what it's like again to work anti crime." We're driving around. We hear a blood curdling scream, right? And we're like, it's, "It's that way. It's that way." And some poor Mexican guy's getting that shit kicked out of him, right? And his wife is screaming. He's getting robbed on the street, and. um Little Red gets out of the car and grabs the victim and his wife. And we stay in the car because we're two educated anti-crime cops. We know never chase a guy on foot. We stay with the car. He's running. He goes a block ahead of the guy. The guy runs right to us, (laughs) all out of wind, and we're fresh as daisies. And he was like, he gave up. He's like, who are these guys? Right? And then we handed the 
the collar to some uniform cops, and he never the uniform yeah. cop never saw an observation robbery collar in his life. He was like, "How'd you get this?" It was uh, like his first collar. Yeah, right? and he was so happy to get it. But we were like, we used to do this all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny yeah. though. You got to come up with a strategy. So many people don't didn't do that. It was my partner. We had a uh, a victim in the back. And you were doing a, you know a canvas right after he got robbed. So oh there he goes right there. Are you sure? Yeah. So I told I didn't just jump out of the car. Right. I told my partner drive up to the corner and drop me off. The bang a Yuli. So we saw where he was crossing. I went behind a van. I saw my partner was coming. Driving down back down. As soon as he came close, threw him right up against the police right in his ear. Shock, boom, surprise. That's smart. Cuffed him. That's why you didn't have to and get if into a track to take meet, off, right? He was going to take off right into my partner's hands. Right. But you got to have, have a plan. Brains a little bit. Have a plan, oh, yeah. they say, right? Yeah. That happened to me one time. I was, we were chasing a guy. There was a movie theater up in the 3-0 on Broadway, and the guy was in a stolen car. So we went to pull him over, and he took off, and he bailed out of the car at 145 in St. Nick. So I was putting it over the whole time, over the radio. And then all the cops are coming, right? And the guy runs down the subway. There's like 15 cops chasing this guy down the subway. And, and when I went down the first set of stairs, there's a landing that goes, there's another set of stairs that comes up on 145 Street. So I just saw like a pair of feet. That's all I saw <laughs> was the back of his heels. Skip like on. on the last two steps. Going out that way. So all the cops were running down. I said, let me try this, right? So I went that way, and it turned out. I'm chasing the guy now, just me and him, down the block. And I get him, and this guy just got out. He was fucking cock diesel. It was in August. He was dripping sweat, right? And I'm like, get on the ground, motherfucker. I had my, my gun, like, right on him, uh-huh. like, maybe three feet away. He's like, I ain't going down. I go, get on the fucking ground. <laughs> He's like... I ain't going down, motherfucker, right? He saw me. And then two fucking transit cops came running down the fucking the sidewalk like Charles Atlas and tackled this guy. But I didn't want to fight the guy with my gun. Nah, especially... The guy would have kicked my ass anyway. The diesel. guy looked like... The guy was huge. Right, he's coming out of prison. He's cock yeah. diesel. He's juiced up, you know? The guy was huge. I, I didn't love want that to term. fight him with I my love gun that term, cock diesel. Because people used to ask us. We'd ask them a description. they say, what the guy look like? And they go, oh, he was cock diesel. And I'd say, like me? They go, no, not like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, though. Oh, yeah. Those foot chases. And <laughs> now you're, in, you're already in. You can't back out. You can't back out now. Fuck it. You got to go the whole way. Yeah, and then when we went back, we got the car. He had a uh, pistol on the uh, console, too, in between the seat and the console. Not only was he Those... going back, he was getting his old cell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god he didn't want to go back though that guy there was some cock diesel guys when that was the worst when they just got out like if they were on the street for a couple of months they started doing smoking, crack smoking yeah. and they got out of shape again when they just got out it was like oh shit yeah you don't want to deal with it the university of the state penal system <laughs> i think uh de blasio was trying to close that down right rikers yeah they want to spread it out all through the city yeah that'll never happen that's crazy man I don't understand it. Could you imagine living like on 34th Street or something like that and they want to put the facility right next door? I mean, there are little jails here and there. Like, what do we have? The college right there in um, Long Island City. Right. There's a jail right on that block. It's a small, it's like a halfway house. Right. Those type of things. There's one on Edgecombe, too. It's like, a you know, when I just, I don't understand. You have the facility there. Whatever's not working, fix it. What's Make his, it better. What's this it... big picture, though? Does he want to knock that down and put, like, condos? Or? It's got, there has to be a, a motive for it. There has to be somewhere that they're going to make money out of it. Either it's private investing, they're investigating, investing privately in some land that's going to be used for right. condos or something in the future. There has to be, because I don't understand the necessity. Yeah, I know. Make that spot better. It's one destination. You're on the corner. They can't escape into, you know, they can jump into the water, but other than that, you know, you're, it's just it's it's already a prison, make you know, it, a, a jail, make it better. Could you imagine putting condos there? What they would go for it all? Yeah, but you also I got, the, you that got water the airport. Is there, though. You got the airport right across. Is it? Yeah, it's Laguardia is right there. Other than looking at water, I wouldn't go in that water. No, no, I wouldn't go in it either. Probably more bodies popping out of that water than you know the Hell, funeral the hell's home. Gate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like one people of the... used to go swimming though there at really? Astoria Park. Man. There's pictures of people diving off and going to the water right there at Astoria Park. 
And then for a long time, you couldn't do it. So yep. let me ask you something. You were, I, I worked with you, and I know that you were one of the best interviewers in the 2-3 squad. I always tried to get you to go to Homicide. You wouldn't come to Homicide because for some reason you loved El Barrio, and you wouldn't come up to the Homicide <laughs> squad. What, are, what were some of your uh, techniques that you could share with our listening audience of your interrogation techniques? Oh, mine was like I never went to school for it or anything. I was just... You got to be a good bullshitter, you know? So <laughs> if you bullshit the guy and you get a rapport with the guy and, and you're kicking it, because a lot of times when you get that, and I'll be doing an interview with another guy, and then we'll go out of the room and he'll be like, you know, tell that guy to stay outside. I just want to talk to you. Or tell Detective Pat to come back in here. I want to talk to him. I don't want Well, to- first of all, Detective well, Pat is brilliant because... You're using your first name. And I know you're using it because, you know, Porteous is hard for people to say. But it's just, it's it's a personal fact. And then you have the voice. It's undeniable. It's regular, I mean, talking about casting. You should be in every TV show, every yeah. cop movie. You and Bill, uh, everyone. You have to have develop a rapport. That's the biggest thing with, with But you have guys. that every man quality. So right. most of the time, like even if you were locking somebody up from Wall Street for whatever reason... Um, you still have that every man quality. You can you can talk to anybody. Yeah, I can. I that, get well, it. I, I think we all have it here, but you have it like you know you like the fucking. He's got it ten times <clears> the. Uh, well, I like Michael doing, Jordan. Of it. I like doing it too. That's part of the job that I actually miss, like being in the box grilling these guys and trying to get. You know how hard it is to try to get somebody to admit to a murder. Well, let me ask you, you this: know what I mean? Do you That's, ever get to that question, and then like kind of sort of get nervous for the person that you're interviewing? Like you know. That if they give you this specific answer, the one that you've been going after for all this time, you ever is there any feeling in there that ugh, I feel bad because right now oh, we're going yeah. for it, and if he says it, then he's fucking go- they're going to prison yeah. for a long time. But you got to ask that question, right? I actually, yeah, I actually do feel bad for the guys sometimes, depending on the circumstance of the case. But you feel like you're, you know, like you're tricking them into confession. And you feel bad, you feel guilty about it, you know? Yeah, but, but don't you feel that uh, there's some unburdening there that the the, 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 perp, the perp actually wants to tell you, get it off his chest, you gotta oh, move yeah. on? There's a lot of that. For, yeah. the, for the pet. Well, tell you got to pull that man. out. You got to pull that out of the guy, you know? You ever put a collar on and go back in there, even though you were in there in a suit and tie, and then you come back with the collar you later know, on? Him just and, to close the invest- interrogation out? Him and a de- another detective from the 2-3 interviewed this guy who did a double murder in the 2-3 for six hours. They were in the box for six hours, and they couldn't get the confession. And they came out to me, and we had already, all of us had no sleep for like 30-something hours. They came out and they said, we're not going to get it. Why don't you go in there? I said, I'm exhausted. I can't do it. So we had a female detective named Gigi. So Gigi goes in there. 45 minutes later, the guy cracks. And he says, I want Detective Pat and that other bastard to come back in here. They worked so hard to get this confession. I want to tell it to them. Wow. That's what he did. Wow, yeah. that's great. Yeah. That deserves an applause break that's right, right there. We had we had a uh, case. Another guy had a case in um, I think it was Reading, Reading, Pennsylvania. And actually, the case was in the two three, but the perp fled to uh, Pennsylvania. So um, the detective put out an eye card on the guy. So it popped in in Pennsylvania for investigative nar- card. Right, it popped in Pennsylvania for narcotics. So I was coming in four to twelve. And he was doing a day tour, so he calls me up. He goes, hey, you want to go to Pennsylvania when you come in? I go, yeah, all right. I was dressed like this. I went upstairs. I signed in. I got in the car, and I went to Pennsylvania. So they had Pennsylvania. There was two Pennsylvania state troopers. These guys were, like, neat as a pen. Suits, ties, briefcase. Meanwhile, you're coming out. The, the beer cans yeah. are falling out of your car, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm Joe Shit the Rag the Man. Castleberg is falling out of his so, pocket. Joe Shit the Rag Man. <laughs> He's got so, a suit that was from Robert Hall from the 50s. <laughs> so what they had, they had a, um, a homicide in a park where two two perps picked up a guy in the street and they brought him up to some like town park outside of town like 5 o'clock in the morning and they... They said, oh, let's go to the bathroom. There's like a public bathroom there. And they went and they shot the guy in the head. And they left him there. They got, jumped in the car and they took off. So that was the trooper's case from Pennsylvania. 
we had a case on one one ten and Lex, a homicide case. So we went there to talk to talk to him about that. So we go over there, and the detective that was in the squad he goes, "Yeah, there's two troopers talking to him. They'll be right out." So they came out and they were like, "Fuck, this guy ain't saying shit, right?" Mm-hmm. So me and me and the other guy going there. Da, 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 oh, wait a minute. Da, 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 da. He brought in Joe shit the ragman. Yeah. So him and I go in there. So we're like, "Hey, how you doing, I'm Detective Pat? We're from the two three. <laughs> so right away we were kicking it with the guy. He was like, "Yo, these guys from Pennsylvania are fucked up, man." He goes, "I don't want to fucking be staying here. Can you bring me back to Manhattan?" And we were like, "Well, it depends what goes on here, you know." So we wind up getting our case. From one time and uh, Lex, he gives that up, right? So then the guy was with, he he went out of the room, so I stayed there with the guy. So I go, what the fuck you do over here anyway, man? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes, dude, we went down, we picked this guy up, the guy ripped us off with some cracks, we brought him up to the freaking... Um, into the park and we shot him in the head. <laughs> I go, I go. Well, you're lucky because the guy actually didn't die. The guy is still alive. The guy was like brain dead in the hospital uh. out there. So I go, it's not a murder or anything. He goes, can you bring me back to New York? I go, yeah, but you got to tell the other two troopers what's going on with that case. He goes, I don't really want to talk to them. I go. I'll try to get you back to New York. I got to talk to the ADA <laughs> in New York, right? Yeah. So he goes. Uh, all right, tell them fucking guys to come back, right? In the meantime, it was one of the detectives' birthday outside. Yeah. I went out, I got a piece of cake, a bottle of soda. <laughs> I go, here, have this, a couple of Newports. The guy was happy as shit. So fucking I go outside, the two troopers are standing outside the room. So I go, he's all yours. He just gave me your whole, your whole homicide case. They're like, what? And they went back in there, and he gave it up to them. <laughs> fucking Chad and Biff didn't have the fucking, they didn't have the technique. Yeah. There. So we go back there. We had to go back. So now I got to go testify on their case, like a year oh, later. Shit, yeah. <laughs> so I'm on the fucking stand, and and the guy's sitting right in front of me, like ten feet away, and his defense <laughs> attorney is grilling me. Didn't you promise my client you were gonna bring him back to New York that night? I said. I said I would check with the ADA <laughs> if I could bring him back. I didn't say it was going to be that night. I never said it was going to be that night. He was like, well, you told him that night you were bringing him. He didn't want to do Pennsylvania time. He's still here. It's a year later. I said, well, talk to the DA in Manhattan to see if you get him out of here. You know the guy? He's still there. Still oh, he, never got, he never actually got charged with Telesio's <laughs> case. No kidding. He never got charged. He's still in Pennsylvania. But that's that's amazing. I bet you he still great... likes Detective Pat, though. Yeah, yeah. Have you cool. ever had to confess to anything else? I actually else? fell bad when I was on the stand. That's what, what brought this whole thing up. When I was looking at the guy, I actually felt bad for him. Right. Because I didn't really bullshit him, but I I kind of like, you know, enhanced. We talked yeah. in that way, yeah. He's, a, he's amazing. Also, he's sort of downplaying his, his ability. He has amazing patience. I don't have that. I don't, definitely don't have that. Like, if I was in a box, mm-hmm. I would lose it after an hour or two. He was in the one box for you know six what he hours. Has, I tell you, Detective Pat, you got something that I want you to like me. Because at the, at the, if you look at people in general, some, you know, like this is a guy, you know, he gets along with everybody. You could see the way he moves around. Right. And if I can't get along with him, something's wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he is always the barometer of... I'm always trying to impress him. I always want to have this guy on my side because this is this is telling me that I'm okay as a person, that my personality is good enough. Right. Anybody who doesn't get along with him, dude, how do you problem, not like man. Detective Pat? You yeah. wouldn't be a fucking asshole. Well, I used to get along with a lot of the perps in the street, too. They used to call up. Give them information. I had, C- I had CIs. We had a shooting one time on 112 in Park. As soon as the phone rang from downstairs from the desk, there's a shooting on 112 in Park. The other phone rang. Yo, Detective Pat, your your shooter is so and so from from Lakeview Towers. Mm-hmm. We weren't even at the scene yeah, yet, and great. I knew who the shooter was. That's amazing. That's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was great because if you develop a rapport with these bad guys in the projects and stuff, they're gonna respect you. They're gonna call up when shit happens. That's true, man. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Some guys go the total opposite way, and they come real hard nosed on these guys. You don't get anywhere like that. No. No. No, uh, I've seen it. I've seen detectives go in there on a homicide and not be able to talk or communicate 
and then it's your case, and now the next thing you know, the the, the person getting getting the confession out of you is somebody who came from homicide because right. they're better at, at at talking. Well, you know? if you're in if you're in with a guy like. I know what he does in the box. I know what the other guy does. But if you're questioning the guy and you're trying to get to this one answer, right? So you're leading up to all this crap. And if you got an old detective who's coming from left field, he's blowing the whole right. thing for he's you. Fucking the yeah. whole thing up. And start yelling and all that stuff. So I can't stand that kind of stuff. Well, that know? good cop, bad cop shit is, it's not really a, an effective tool. Not really. It's great for movies, but in reality, right? Yeah. Once in a while it works, but... Well, wait, especially if you got the guy who's going to come in and, like, let's say, soften you up at first. You're going to get on your good side. I, I have a, a scene from my, my, my show that I do, and then I, I get up and I answer the door. Oh, this my uh, my boss wants to talk to you, too. And then he's a hard nose. So uh, right. next thing you know, you want to talk to me again. Get that other guy back in here. Yeah. This guy's, you know, I don't like <clears throat> this fucking guy. I don't like the way he's talking to me. Yeah, we used to So now you come in, you're a pleasure. Let me ask you a question. Uh, now that... Uh, Obviously, with the DNA and how powerful that is as evidence, and uh, we got the videotape, especially that sets a new bar. That thing that happened in the Bronx, where that kid got killed, that fifteen-year-old kid, where they had oh yeah, the surve- yeah, yeah. The yeah. The, the surveillance American. cameras that that bodega <clears throat> had was just incredible. And if that that's the level that we should all try to attain, I don't know why they had such a great. It's kind of odd that in the middle of the Bronx, some bodega right. has footage that you know you could see the snot in the guys. Freaking knows, yeah. but it's there. <clears throat> Those kids are gonna have a hard, hard, hard time. Uh, their face is beautiful on camera. You oh, see yeah. them stabbing the kid outside, dragging them out. But so now you got video evidence stepped up. That might be the number one type of evidence pushing DNA back because now what are we? We're visual people. I don't even need to understand DNA, and by that it all that puts just confess uh, confessions even useful anymore. Is right. it a, is it a waste of time to get a confession? Oh, it's always nice to get the guy to admit to it. You know, you get him locked down on a nice statement. But you have all these <clears> lawyers. The, 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 you the, know, in some these, cases, you don't have DNA. Co- coercion. I mean, a lot of these... Uh, but once you have the DNA, or let's say you got the video, whatever, but if you got a case just based off a confession, how far is that going to go in this day and age where you can't come up with DNA, where you can't get a video? Well, when, we, when I was doing it, it went pretty far because most of it was... So I did nine years in robbery. So a lot of those cases were based on confessions, right. you know? And as soon as yeah, you... Yeah, but you go, also had a victim there. <clears throat> but as soon as you go down, but sometimes the IDs are sketchy, you know? And once you go down and you win the hearings, the guy usually pleads out. But if you, if you go with a solid case, you get a two-page confession signed, you get a t- signed Miranda. Plus a fingerprint... Well, basically, it's a slam dunk. You know, the guy's going to cop out before the and trial. And look, he's believable on the stand. He's not <laughs> yeah, a cowboy. Yeah, well, once you again, know, we go back. Yeah. We go back to that thing. Is the jury going to like him? Yeah. If, I, if I'm a defense attorney what? and you're coming up and I see you talk, I'm like, we're fucked right now. You can't do the. Who's uh, not going to like this guy? You can't start arguing with these defense attorneys. That's no, what they, they pull want. you into. They rather pull you, know? you into a hole. I believe yeah. me. I, you know, it's like when you're a rookie, and if or if you're just a hothead in general through your whole, you're going to get what we call hooked in a situation. Yeah. Well, you're getting hooked in a, in, a, in a trial. That's bad news. We had, by a, defense we had a female detective in the squad. She used to get hooked all the time. And a lot of the ADAs didn't even like dealing, working with her. Because she used to get hooked on the stand by these attorneys. Right, right. Start arguing. Well, since we're talking about evidence <clears throat> and cases and, and you know uh, interviews and stuff like that, this case that's in Chicago with this actor, um, I'm trying to get the... Uh, it up there one second well there was a robbery that took place in chicago involving an actor from the show empire right we all know about it i'm trying to get the guy's name for I some never, reason I'm i never watched him. that show oh i'm on airplane mode that's why yeah i never watch empire either but he's black he's also gay and supposedly he gets robbed uh going to a 24-hour subway his flight came in he's going back to his apartment but he steps out to go get this uh this food and on somewhere in the course of getting his food or coming back, he gets uh, assaulted by two men, supposedly white men, one wearing a ski mask. Also, um, uh, they put a, a rope around his neck and they sprayed what was later found out to be bleach. The actor's name is Jussie Smollett. Uh, so... As the these investigators, which I'm pretty uh, probably is just as great as New York detectives over there, 
doing the course the course of their investigation, they find a hot sauce bottle containing bleach. They have a video of uh, the victim in this case coming back into the, his place of residence with what looks like a, a rope around his neck. They've recovered that rope. Uh, the only problem they have with this case is that although Chicago probably has more surveillance cameras than any other big city in this country, uh, they don't have the assault happening taking place. After looking at hundreds and hundreds of hours of tape, they have yet to find um, this assault taking place. They're looking into the rope now, and uh, they had a, a statement from the actor saying that he was on the phone with his manager at the time that could verify. Because at the same time that they're supposed to be white and wearing uh, a ski mask, they were also yelling out stuff like, uh, you're in MAGA country. MAGA meaning uh, make America great. It's a reference to Trump. And um, we all know that Chicago is not MAGA country. Far from it. It's more. Like, it's New York City country. It's a big city country, L.A. country. You know what I'm saying? It's a very mm -hmm. liberal country. So now we're investigators here, all of us. When we look at a case like this, even though it takes place in Chicago, our spidey senses jump up, and we start either uh, figuring out who we think might have done it or calling bullshit on the whole thing. Uh, let's see, what, what do we got? What do you think? What do you think happened here, Bill? Look, I, one of the things uh, I think speaks volumes about this is that he won't cooperate with giving the police his phone. To me, that says... That's a... That's yeah, a, but what... what, bef what that's is a flag. It, when you give somebody your phone, what, they have access to your phone now, so they're basically going to be able to... You, they're going to be able to see all the pictures that right, you have. Right, but if in he there. really wants this investigation to to go forward, he has to give them. It'll get them the cell site where it actually happened, the time the call was, right, and all other information that he right he might not want them to find out about. But to me, that pops a flag. He doesn't want them to see so it. What so about the guy who's on the phone with? Why don't they get his phone? Well, he's not cooperating either. Oh. That's his manager. Oh, okay. So, because then I guess he'd have to give up his phone, and it's for a yes. couple of hours that you got to give up your right. phone. That's what I read. So basically, well, you, you don't give up have to go into the photos in the phone. No, you, you don't. You just go to the text messages or the. Uh, they just have to electronically do it via warrant. Yeah, they they don't even have to take the phone. They got to get a subpoena. Yeah, they got. It says get... in an article that I read today he'd only have to give up his phone for a couple of hours. I don't think he has to R give it up at all. That's what the article said. That I, know, I, but that's I can't the press. Take right subpoena his phone records. Right. And the other guy. Well, that's the thing. That's that's how they'd have to go to court and get it rather than have it voluntarily. My yeah, question is... he's a victim. He's not a perp. He's, I know, but when, when you victim. give somebody... Your, like, for example, if you're a cop and you were doing a, a detective and you're doing a report on your personal computer, people told you not to do that. Why? Because now, um, what, if we needed your, your personal computer to get this bit of information, everything that you have stored there is up for grabs in court. Right. So I would imagine the same situation happens... With uh, with giving up your phone. I mean, this is a guy who maybe he's got questionable stuff. I know if you looked at my phone, what would you find out? I love chicks with big tits. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be a thing. Uh, I'm, yeah. Whatever you're into, that's probably what's going to be number one on your phone. So I can understand that fear of not wanting His to give privacy, your phone out. Yeah. Um, and can you really trust the police or anybody giving an investigation in the time where leaks are going like crazy? Who's not going to want to know or if somebody leaked this? I understand the fear behind that. They should be able to subpoena the phone. They should be able to get the phone records showing the two of the, those people communicated. That's an easy one. Um, now, if the, if there's no call that took place, then that's a lie. So that's a um, one of the things for people that... If, well, why wouldn't the other guy he's talking to on the phone his say... His manager. Yeah, his manager. Why wouldn't he come forward and say, yeah, I had a conversation with the guy at zero two hundred hours while he was in Subway waiting for a sandwich? I think he did say that. Right. He did? But they're not giving up their phones, which they're not giving confirm up their phones. what they said. Because his story is bullshit. Yeah, it's a it's, good possibility. I mean, yeah. I wasn't there, but for me, just looking at all of that that you just mentioned, I would, I would call bullshit. All right, and they're looking into the rope now. We've gone as far as with this case is now um, they got to look. They're looking into the rope. Where it was purchased? Was it purchased around that time? Um, and I'm not really sure. You'd have to look at a motive. If you're saying the case is bullshit, it's bullshit. Why? Because our victim in this case, our so-called victim, had something to do with it. Was it to get his name out there more? To bring 
um, attention to the LGBTQ community? Is that what, what this, was this a stage thing? Um, my thought was uh, possibly a jilted lover that's looking to, you know, to settle the score and uh, wants to put a distraction out there, like make it, take the, um, you know, people won't look at me, a jilted lover. They'll be looking at two rednecks that are, uh, you know, anti-Trump guys that just pick this guy out of random, beat him up, happen to have a chain, uh, uh, this rope, and, and set him up. Uh, lighting, uh, no, bleach. Threw bleach on him. Right. Um, because, you know, it, listen, I understand, you know, you don't want to get embarrassed by giving up your phone. But if you're going to bring it up and you're going to make a police report on it, which brings us to another thing. I don't know if the guy, I don't know why, I hope I'm not confusing two stories. Originally, he might not have wanted to report it, supposedly, and then he did. There was a delay, I heard, and, and I heard, I don't, I can't remember, maybe an hour. And then when the police went there, he still had the rope around his neck when they went to his apartment. Right. Yeah. There was also a lady... A There's a lot of red flags in this oh. case. There was a yeah. neighbor who made a statement that says, I saw two uh, suspicious-looking white supremacists outside. Something like that. <laughs> and um, once again... Yeah, but was it, it was, wasn't it like 30 below that night, too? She said that she saw them out there for a couple of hours, and they looked suspicious, which brings up this point. Once again, in a city, because they debunked her uh, statement, once in this city where there's everywhere is a video camp. Well, lady, where did you see him? Oh, they were standing right there. Now you look at the camera. There's nobody standing right there ever yeah. for the last five hours. Okay, so now you're a liar. Right. You know, um, the, this robbery must have taken place just by chance in this 100 foot square foot, 1,000 square, square foot where we're not being covered with tape uh, right. by, by a surveillance camera. That, was it a coincidence? I mean, who would know where every single camera is? Most right. people don't. Not even cops do. Right. What about the uh, subway? They got them in, in the store? I think everything with the subway works out. It was a 24-hour subway. Um, they had uh, two part people of uh, that they wanted to question. Um, they, then they said they're probably homeless. They were in the area, two people, uh, about a half hour to 15 to 30 minutes before the incident. Uh, they're, they're the only two people. They're persons of interest. You know, the only reason why anybody's even talking about this case anymore is because it was deemed a hate crime. Because, uh, you know, he's a homosexual, he's black, and what they, they, they said the two key words, there, the F word and the N word, while they were assaulting him. So that's for a specific purpose. That uh, to, to make it a hate crime, to, to de deter for what this actually is, you know, but to solve a case like this, you have to have total cooperation from the complainant. And if the complainant's not cooperating, you may never be able to find out the truth, whether get the people that did this, if it's true, or disprove it, said, no, this never happened, you made it up. You know, so, and it's funny when we talk about victims, because we're all law enforcement here, retired now. But, you know, the victims can help you uh, help a case, make a case, or break a case, because that's sometimes that's all you have. And a lot of this Me Too movement... Uh, we're talking about cases that happened years and years ago that weren't uh, told to the police and, uh, you know, reported to the police. And then I'm always like, you know, because we're law enforcement, maybe we're, that's, we're one-sided like that. But I'm like, you should have freaking reported it. If only for the fact that if you were raped or sexually assaulted, I understand it's a, especially with the history of the way we used to do these type of investigations in the past, um, that there might be some apprehension. But... You also have to think about, I could be preventing somebody else from going through the same thing. And that's where bravery comes in. You know, that's where you got to say, I'm going to take it for the, I'm going to take this bullet so that nobody ever has to go through this again by this particular person. Or they won't have to, he won't have the uh, opportunity to do this for a long, long time. And that's where it steps up to, to make a report. So this idea like, oh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go to the police. I felt uncomfortable. I, I felt like they were going to drag me through this, that, make me feel like a victim again. Those are all based on assumptions. You don't want to waste your time. You, you want to live with it. You can't come back and 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 twenty years later and be like, oh yeah. But I got to see that with a rape victim, but not in this case. I mean, this guy, if this really happened to him, what was the delay? Why didn't he report it? You know what I mean? Right. He should be going great guns to cooperate. If they this should really have had happened. a sector car there right on the scene. 
canvas the area with this guy, not go home and wait an hour later and the cops go there. He still has the rope around right, his neck. Right. You know? Would you be walking around an hour later in your apartment well, with the rope also, around your there's neck? There's no crime scene. You need a crime scene in a situation like this so you can I investigate I saw the case the compared to the Tawana Brawley case. Uh, and that was a case from the 80s. Yeah. And uh, she was a girl that lived up here, right? Upstate. Wappingers Falls. And supposedly she was abducted and raped and all these things uh, by white men. And then it turns out that she came home late. And she was scared that her, uh, right. her father, her stepfather was going to punish her or hit her. So she... She scrolled extra men on, her, on herself, I remember that, and put herself right. in a garbage bag and left herself on the side of the road to be found. I think if I recall correctly, that's pretty much close enough to how it happened. Yeah. And then Al Sharpton and, and Maddox, um, Anton Maddox, what was the guy's Alton name? Alton Maddox, Alton Maddox, Maddox and Mason. They, they, they got involved in it. Well, and Bill even, Cosby, too, was involved. Yeah, in even that. though the case was proven it didn't happen this way, uh, Sharpton decided he was going to keep going with it that the co- the confession that she gave was uh, coerced the victim's confession that she actually invented this whole situation was coerced and that this these two guys really did do it and uh and one of the guys she picked out just from a newspaper that was on the desk if i remember correctly and he turned out to be the district attorney of uh westchester county yeah um duchess not pagonis yeah pagonis yeah, 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 yeah. pagonis and didn't he wind up committing suicide? No, I think that was one of the cops that was involved that that she accused of uh, having sex with her or something like that. Yeah. It wasn't Pagonis because she's got a law firm up there now. Yeah. The, uh, PI Pagonis firm. collected too, at least from Sharpton. I don't know if she's ever paid him, but he's he's got like a, a lien on whatever money I she makes. I want to see that check. Yeah. Man. I don't buy it. I'm yeah. buying a few well, she works as, I think she's an LPN now. She has a, a legitimate job. Okay. Yeah, so... I mean, this case, it just stinks to high heaven. Everybody knows it does. This is something not right. And at the end of the day, what's holding you back the most from getting to the bottom of it is because the victim So what won't help you. So what are you supposed to do? Realistically, you'd be like, you know what? When you want to help us, call us. Close We're it not, out. Yeah, that's it. It's done. We're not right. investigating it it's anymore. It's politically charged. Well, it would be nice to flip him and collar him. You know, it we, would be. We it used to be. do that, too. We yeah. used to collar guys for false reports. Yeah. It was great, you know? You flip the guy and then you drop a number on him. You know, then you, <laughs> well, you get ten hours overtime <laughs> doing it. There's certain collars <laughs> that that are good to make, and that's one of them. You know, because it it like you can't oh, have it. You can't have everybody like lying to the police and just letting them walk out because they'll do it again. Yeah, that's a lot of gratitude making a call like that. If you were the guy in the box and flipped him, and you came out with him in in handcuffs, it's a feather in your cap. Yeah. You know, especially if there's a victim or well, you get one of these people that are just a completely false statement. A couple of these girls have been caught out there, the, the college girls claiming that they were raped on campus and then it never it happened. Turns out never oh, happened, yeah. yeah. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, don't worry about it. Go about your business. That was some lacrosse team, right? In college. In jail. The Duke, the Duke in lacrosse team. They're, they're getting yeah. let go after yeah. years and five years in prison, a whole career destroyed because yeah. some girl... Um, Made a false claim against them. See, yeah. that case there, too, you got to tiptoe around that, too, because it's not like the guy's some street urchin from the 2 3. The guy's an actor. So you got to make sure right. you can't go with your A game in the box with this guy and, and start hammering him. Right. Well, because you know he's probably I mean? lawyered up, too. Yeah. Well, why would he lawyer point. up? He's the victim. Right. The same reason you know? why he won't give you the phone. Yeah. They don't trust the police. But what's his M.O. behind the whole thing? Just to start know. a racial... Uh, I don't know. The we racial the scene in Chicago? Yeah. You know? I mean, let's just go far-fetched and go, let's say you find out through the grapevine you're getting cut off. You know, Empire, they're going to write you off in two weeks. You're, you're, you're dead on this. Or you got into a problem with the executive producer. You know they're going to write you off. What are you doing? Fuck it. You could create some situation. I'm just shooting. shooting I mean, I would never do something like that. Maybe he would, but... Yeah, you're talking why about actors. You, I'm not saying Why would this you is, come up with something like that? Keep you on the show. I don't know. You Maybe. know? Buys you a couple weeks. You know, who's going to fire Who's gonna fire this guy now? Really? You just got beat up last week and called this, that, and the other. I'm going to fire you? Um, listen, I have no... This is just right. off the top of my head. Thinking, right. sit, detectives sitting around thinking, what could be, possibly be this guy's MO? The, big, the best one is a relationship that soured. I think you hit it before on that, yeah, something like that. I think that has something 
to do with it. Somebody wanted to beat him up because they felt like, uh, you know, if you get attached to somebody who's on TV and all of a sudden, uh, you know, you, now you, you get a moment to step in their world. You're feeling kind of sp- sort of special. Then they cut you off. Like, fuck this person, man. Piece of shit. You know, people get angry. You introduce them into this world for a little bit. They got their feet work. They started right. feeling comfortable. And then you kick them out. So that that's uh that gets pe- people like uh, really really pissed off. Somebody will give that up his his lover or something. They'll get in a fight one night somewhere down the road, and his lover will say, "Oh, he told me that it was all bullshit." <laughs> and, uh, well, that's a <laughs> you that's know, a happens, problem you yeah. run into as an investigator. Also, is just that sometimes you may uh, get tunnel vision. You may see the case going in one way, and I don't like this guy for the other. But the truth is, this is your victim. Whatever reason he has for not cooperating doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It didn't mean that he didn't get assaulted. And when people get assaulted or they get that bubble burst, if you're walking around all the time and you never think anything's going to happen and then somebody comes up and they punch you right in your face and they take your shit, now all of a sudden, whoa, well, I'm not that tough anymore. My whole world is destroyed. Anybody could come up to me and just take my stuff and hurt me, physically hurt me. So now you're in this altered state. And if you're an actor on top of it and you don't know how to... You're very dramatic about everything else anyway. I guess we're going to find out soon enough. Yeah, I want to see how that plays out. You know, Pat, one of the things that uh, I'm sure everyone would want to hear about, and you were connected to that famous case in the 2-3, the the murder at Rayo's, which became almost like this cult story uh, because of Rayo's and their eight tables, and it takes a year to get reservations there. But you want to tell us a little bit about that case? I don't even case? think you can get reservations there. You probably can unless you, you know own somebody. The table. But could you tell us a little bit about that homicide? Well, I think Rayo's, just to get it back, if people don't live in New York, Rayo's is a really... Um, celebrity place. It's a, a restaurant, restaurant, Italian right. restaurant. It's still in Harlem on the one block that the, the probably Italian people still remain on. That able used to be very Italian before, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was all Italian over there. And he's saying they only have eight tables in this restaurant. Pleasant, Pleasant Avenue. 114 and Pleasant, yeah. How many tables? Is it really just eight? Eight tables, yeah. Is it? Just eight, yep. They have the sauce now, Rayo's. You yeah, can buy no. the sauce in the pretty, store. It's pretty good, man. But it wasn't always like that. It was just a restaurant that you needed. It was exclusive is the good word for that. Yeah, you had to own a table or something like that from what I heard. So like, you own a table. It's like, and a, con- you, it's like a condo. And if you're yeah. not going to go, you can let other people use it. Yeah, you could say, Mark, Billy, you want my table tonight? Go with Patty. Go get something to eat. That's how it goes. And it's one meal a night they serve? Or? I don't even think they're open seven days a week. No, I don't think they are. No. So uh, how popular was it when you were working there? Was or it that night or? Well, because old? I know Rayo's came to be as, you know, like um, I found out about it like maybe 15 years ago. But there was a time it was, I, I never heard of Rayo's before that. But because of Goodfellas and, and the, the, yeah. the celebrities that would frequent there. Yeah, I never really paid too much attention to it either, you know. But uh, it was if- actually on the corruption list. <laughs> we weren't allowed to go in there. You okay. know, if the police department finds out a place that mobsters frequent or this or that so we weren't even allowed to go in there All right so yeah it was a there's a list of every command has that yeah uh, those are the best places to go to yeah those are- <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you gonna tell us what happened or are we gonna yeah well there was a girl it was like a week before christmas and um there was a girl singing opera what year are you talking about yeah i think well uh, what was it oh four yeah right, i think it was oh yeah. four so she was going around they have a small bar in there. Then they have the eight, the eight tables, and she was going around inside where the tables are singing opera. So there was a guy at the bar called Louis the Lump. He was an old time wise guy. He's there drinking. He was like sixty five years old, and there's a young guy like thirty five years old. He was from a different family in the mafia. So he's saying about the girl. He's like. This fucking girl can't sing. Why don't she shut the fuck up? And all this shit. She, her voice sucks. Oh, my God. He's telling this guy, Louie, at the bar, right? So Louie's like, why don't you let the girl sing? He's an old-time, uh-huh. old-school guy, right? Let her sing. Take it easy. Let her sing. You know, let the girl, you know, shut up. Let her sing, right? So they start arguing. So the, the, 
the big guy, Albert, he's like, fuck you, fuck your mother, your mother's oh, a man. fucking whore and all this shit. Oh, shit. So he's, he's telling all of this to Louie, and Louie's fucking steaming, uh-huh. right, because he's from the old school. <laughs> so he goes, little does he know, Louie's got a fucking thirty eight in his pocket, right? So he goes to fucking his buddy, this guy Albert, he goes, come on, let's go have a cigarette. So they go out, they start to walk out. To have a smoke out in front, fucking Louis comes off the bar, right right behind him, puts one right in the back of his head, and then he's falling down like this, and he fires another round, and he hits a, a court officer from Suffolk County eating di- dinner over there in the leg. Oh wow! So he gets shot. He throws the gun right by the court officer's table, and there's steps to go out. So he the fucking hangs the OA on the floor. He goes out the steps. I'm on like 112 and 1. I was going to get a meal. So I'm dressed like this, right? So I hear Plain him clothes. over. I hear him come over. I go down the block. I get him right out of the fucking coming up the steps. And there was a couple other cops from the 2-3 there because they were there picking up jet tickets from the cook. <laughs> so <laughs> so they, were, they were there too. Yeah. So the guy from The Sopranos, the guy, um, Pellegrino. Frank, Frank Pellegrino. Pellegrino. Yeah, yeah. He comes What's up to name? me and he goes, that's your guy. Because I, obviously I didn't see it. He goes, that's your fucking guy right there. So I got him on the car. Louis the Lump. Yeah, I'm holding him on the car, fucking mad people exiting. So there's the other two guys are fucking on the other side. I'm like trying to hold everybody back. He, he showed up with a couple other guys. But then I took Louis to the two three so i went back to the two three i threw him in the box i fucking put a suit on because i knew everybody well, the big, in their every boss and the brother showed up there was fucking chiefs in there inside the crime scene drinking wine at the yeah, bar it was disgusting right they were licking they the balls of the owner it was it was pathetic <clears throat> so what happens trying, was, to, trying to get a table right? probably yeah, yeah. What happens was I had bosses calling me up and saying, yo, can you give me a table there? Like months later, because they thought I made a contract there, but I never made a contract because of the way we were treated. They were uncooperative as hell. No one in the whole restaurant saw a thing. The bartender, this guy, Nicky the Vest, he's been there for about 40 years. He needed to be slapped. He's got like 300 different vests. They call him Nicky the Vest. Uh I went to talk to him. I was like, because it happened right in front of him. Uh He's like, I was downstairs getting wine. I wasn't around. You know, uh-huh. I was like, okay. And then everybody else in there was, Got un- was uncooperative. Yeah. He wanted to get a, a bus and bring everybody to the two three. Yeah, I wanted to empty the whole restaurant to a city bus and bring them all. He on wanted all. to bring them to the two three. We should have did that. Yeah, and they, the chief of department at the time said, yeah, okay. And then the owner started having a uh, his period. You know, started going nuts. So and they he, were like, oh, interview everyone in here. And that was the most he, ridiculous he thing. He told me that that guy after he pointed to do it out, the guy Pellegrino. Yeah. I said, you know, like when the smoke cleared, I said, all right, so you saw him, you saw him shoot the dude. He go, oh, I never said that. I don't know what you're talking about. So I said, all right. So when I did the DD five, I put down exactly what happened, and I was going to tell the DA, subpoena his ass, put him on the stand, let him lie on the oath. Yeah. Because he lied to me after he, he initially mm-hmm. told me that this is the guy that did it. I saw him do it. Yeah. Now he's backtracking. He's like, I didn't say that, you know. But the guy wound up pleading out anyway. He was actually he was sixty seven years <clears throat> old, and he he the chopped shooter. a manslaughter yeah. one. And he got fifteen to um, get five to fifteen, but he died in prison after like seven yeah. years. I he think. was actually what you were talking about before. I actually felt bad for this guy talking to him, you know, interviewing him. Remember you were asking before? Yeah, yeah, why? But he's because he was such a fucking nice guy. He was an old time. He, he was an old bookie. Yeah, he was old old numbers guy. But he said Bronx. something really funny. He was interviewing him and he says to him, he goes, Why are you carrying a gun? He goes, What do you mean? He goes, Orange alert. 
you know, the terrorist, <laughs> yeah. the terrorist levels. Yeah. And that was like a big thing on the front page of the post. Yeah. He carried the gun because of Orange Alert. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that was funny. That's when they were doing that, the colors for yeah, the, for uh, the terrorist terrorists. Stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Orange was like the second highest. It was okay. <laughs> the, the government told me that I can carry yeah, yeah. Yeah. Orange There's Alert. There's a lot of terrorists out I don't there. Have a, I don't have a fire uh, license. Uh, yeah, I don't have an alert, a permit. But, you but, know, when you see yeah. the way this job operates, too, every boss and his brother was there. and You know, it was... Sort of yeah. sickening, you know, yeah, because the standard they wants, hold, yeah, but the standard make, they hold us to, and then they go there and they're all yeah. trying to make contracts and kissing this guy's ass, you know, and the, the owner, yeah, and the gun, you know, they're like, oh, can crime scene get through this quick? Well, why, why should they have to get through this quick? Because you want to appease this asshole, you know? I think that was the last time I was ever there. Yeah, and I had bosses call me up. Hey, Patty, can you hook me up? I yeah. want to go with my wife Friday night. I'm like, I never made a contract there, man. Fuck them guys. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, they didn't help you out at all. Yeah. They actually hurt you. Yeah. What's his name showed up? Bo Deedle and his whole fucking crew. What is that? Yeah. Sonny was Was there, he still so on the job? Sonny, Sonny Grasso, French Connection. He was he still up. on the job? No, no. He, no. He, Bo Deedle, private eye. But he came to, sh you know. At the him. night of the scene? Yeah. 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 There was a guy that was on the job that drove Kelly. He was in Kelly's security detail, the, the PC. Yeah. And he was in there eating, and he jetted. Yeah, because oh, really? he didn't want to get caught in there because it's on a corruption list. Yeah, he ran right by the body. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but he came back. He guy. came back. He almost got jammed up there. He did guy. get jammed. I think he got dumped. Yeah. So where did he go? He ran down the block, and he was hiding for a while, and then he came back. He went like, back to the police academy. Yeah. He thought, no, he thought about it. He said, like, yeah. get out of Simon. here. And then he thought to himself, yeah, wait a minute. Maybe yeah, someone's going to get me up. Somebody's going to give me up. Yeah. It's better if I was right. there. I can't remember that guy's name, but he, he came back. Yeah. Oh, that's a sticky situation, though, to be in. When you're out someplace, and how the hell are you supposed to know what, what list some place is on? I'm gonna, every time I go to a different... First of all, I don't know where the precinct boundaries are in half these places. Now I'm going to go to a precinct. Can I look at your list? Because I'm thinking about having dinner over here. Yeah. Well, you usually know when you're working in a precinct for a while. Like when you're in a task force, you're working in multiple commands. But if you're working in the two, three for 10 years, 20 years, yeah, you, know the you know what, what places are on the list, you know. And they, come, the and, they come and they go. But They're on the list. They're off the list, right? But that's just for the particular command or for everybody should know. Like, oh, you shouldn't be in here. Uh, no, yeah, it's the 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 whole police, no, it's the whole, whole police department. The whole, that's my point. If a yeah, place is the on the list. Police they boss, just, they're yeah. supposed to know. Right. But How am I supposed to know right. what's on the list right. in the 2-3 you know. if I don't go there? I'm going well, out tonight. Could you tell me what locations are on, yeah. your, <laughs> on your corruption list? I just don't want to I mean, go to one. There's some places that you work in back in the day. <laughs> and I'm hungry. If you see a joke of poker machine or, or you know, somebody... So you know it's shady, yeah, but there's yeah. some places like that place with rails. It's on a list for some reason, and it's a it's, it's a legitimate Italian restaurant where you could get shot, possibly. But you, but know what the, you know what the <laughs> joke is? They're on that corner, 114th and Pleasant. They had they parked indiscriminately wherever the hell they wanted to, for and years. no one bagged them with a summons Ever. or anything. Ever. That because should have been the corruption. How come they're not getting bagged? Oh, because he knows so and so. Well, because you everybody's know? hoping told, to get a table. Yeah, there. don't bang these. Is guys the food at that good there? I never ate there. I, don't yeah, know. I never ate there either. I, I, I you was, went, didn't you go there with your wife? Never. There was I was sickened by what happened that night of the the homicide. That I was like, I would never. Go into that place. There was know. a certain boss in there with his wife. Eating. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Getting paid back for the contract. Yeah, he made a contract out of the job, but uh -huh. I didn't. and he wasn't even there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't get it though. They okay, so we won't help you out in investigation, but we don't hate we don't hate cops. We just don't want anything. I don't know. I figure some of these places they you're not going to feel comfortable going in there. Well, There's a lot also, of places. They also that, wanted that mystique of being like imitation wise guys. No you know? snitching. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but then they're, they're the real deal, you had two mobsters in there, and they're rubbing elbows with there's a Law Suffolk County freaking yeah. guy there, yeah. there's somebody else that drives a, a big time boss, Sonny Grasso North, from French Connection fame, an off duty detective. Uh -huh. Odile has a table there, you know. Yeah, that that that, that was an interesting case. Yeah, any other any other uh, shootings that you were involved in? Well, I got when I got shot, I got I caught some lead in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> I caught some lead. Suddenly, now you got shot by another talking, detective, though. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking for two hours right now. Now he's he caught some lead. Yeah, we shooting at a pit bull instead. Hit Fucking him. 
Friendly what fire. Happened? What happened? We were over in uh <laughs> <laughs> We were in uh two guys did a burglary over on uh one oh nine and one in the projects. So they they were inside the apartment, uniform went to the apartment, and the two guys the uniform opened the door, the two guys jumped out the window. It was like the third story. One guy landed on his feet and ran away. The other guy landed and got paralyzed. Oh, shit. So we go to St. Luke's Hospital to interview the guy that got paralyzed. So he tells us, we're like, who's the other guy? Who was with you and all this shit, right? Because they were saying, like, the cops pushed them and all this crap. At first, they were making allegations. Of course, that yeah. The cops pushed them out the window. So he goes, oh, the dude lives over here, such and such a address it was actually in the same building but on a different floor so we go over there it was two o'clock in the morning it was myself a sergeant that flew in from the two five and two other detectives from the two three so we're looking for the second perp now so we go over there and it's like a long you come out the store and it's like a big courtyard and all the way down the end it was like a picnic table with a bunch of kids sitting on it so I'm like 15 feet in front of the other three guys. So they're back there bullshitting. So all of a sudden I see the freaking dog. The guy had a rot, uh, Roddy, huge. Dog's name was Terra. So, <laughs> so the dog comes running down, and I see the dog coming. I got like a good visual on him. He's coming right down the sidewalk, right towards us. Uh-huh. So I'm like, watch the dog, watch the dog, to the other three guys bullshitting, right? So I, I bust my leather out, <laughs> and I got the, I got it just like this. I'm ready to whack him, right? And he runs right by me, and he goes to the detective that was with us. So the detective grabs this other guy, and this other guy who's in front of him, and he starts letting rounds go at the dog. <laughs> but he's letting the rounds go, and they're ricocheting off the ground into my foot. Oh, so I'm shit. standing like 10 feet in front of him. And I'm like, oh, shit, blew out the side of my foot. How many rounds did you get hit with? I got hit with one round. So what are you saying, rounds? Makes it sound better. <laughs> well, she fired multiple rounds, oh, but okay. I only got hit with one. All right. You know? How so, much did you get in the lawsuit? Who did he pull in front of him? Another cop? <laughs> yeah. Because he was trying to, like, avoid the dog, like, get away from the dog. And he, he got behind and saw the cop, and he was letting rounds go at the dog. And I think he grazed the dog. But what happened was... The apartment, right, the door where we were at, the dog had a litter of puppies right inside that door. Oh. From the apartment that oh, we were walking by. Oh, it's such by. a sad story. <laughs> so the dog was just going there to protect his litter. Yeah. He saw some strangers, and that's where my babies are. Yeah. I'm going to go protect them. I got to protect my puppies. So the guy goes, that was October 18th, 1997. So <laughs> I'm sitting on one of these big, uh, what do they call them, concrete flower pots. And I got these boots on, and blood's pouring out of the hole in the boot, right? Uh-huh. So these three guys are standing there looking at me. I go, call a fucking ambulance. What are you <laughs> doing? Call me a fucking ambulance. <laughs> so one guy gets on the radio, and he goes, oh, uh, Central, can you give me a bus over here? We got an MOS shot. And she's like, direction of flight, where's the perp? What's he wearing? <laughs> he's, he's a detective. It's <laughs> like, no, we got him here. We got him, right? Uh-huh. Fucking everybody and their brother showed up, man, uh-huh. for this thing. So now they bring me over to St. Luke's, right? So I'm in the hallway, all these big bosses, and it was fucking pouring out. It was windy, coming sideways, the rain. So all these bosses, I'm in the uh, gurney. They're like, bullshit with me and all this shit. So this one guy, this one chief, he goes... Can you get me a table at Rayo's? <laughs> <laughs> no, aren't, you, aren't you the guy from the Rayo's? This was years before. Yeah, then. it was before. Uh, no, so I told my partner... Getting back to that, I told my partner, call my wife and tell her what happens in case she sees something, right? So he calls her up, and she's like, uh, Kurt, what bar are you guys at? You're full of shit. And he's like, oh, no, shit. Patty got shot. And he's, she's like, you're full of shit. What bar are you at? <laughs> and he's like, she didn't fucking believe it. <laughs> so then the chief wanted to, to send uh, a helicopter to my house to pick up my wife and kids to bring them down. I was like, nah, chief, that's... That's too much, you know. But in hindsight, I should have let him do it. Kids, kids, yeah, kids would have loved, loved it. it. Kids would have loved, loved it, off. and your yeah. wife would have believed you. <laughs> I still want to know. She would have been like, "Wow, you just, <laughs> you just went a long Wait, way to the prove the million this dollar it's question." Definitely bullshit. How much did you get in the civil suit? <laughs> no, I didn't sue anyone. Oh, you're full of shit. 
How much? No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Is it, if your wife still doesn't believe you, like yeah. you know what? No, no, no. This is all your friends. I know you know a chief. This uh, is bullshit. I know he got at least fifty k. Yeah. He's full of shit. It was good though. It was a good time. <laughs> Getting shot was a Getting good time. Shot. Did the bullet really go in? Oh him? yeah, then it got infected. Like you talk. Remember we were talking about the health district. Yeah, my shit was actually real. Uh-huh. And you go in there, everybody's faking it. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody, but this How long like, were you out for? Six months. Oh, shit. And the funny thing is, is like when you go, when you go in there in a, re- a legit line of duty injury, and if they even slightly treat you like, oh, we want to send it. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, yeah. man? I'm, I got shot. I'm not like. I got, but that's why the surgeons over there are like that, because half the guys are scamming. Well, they, know, got a, they got a right? chart right there. They, they're allowed to give you a certain amount of time for surgery, and they're probably going to give it to you. Well, at least the guy I did. I tore my bicep. I had uh, knee surgery, tricep surgery. It was always nine weeks. You could count on it. Nine right. weeks. Any more than that, you were pushing Will it. Were you ever chronic B or what do they call it? Never. Chronic, yeah, a? chronic B. Never. Were you? Me neither. Yeah. I never did that. Never chronic. I always, you know, you, you plan it out. Like, you know, January 1st, you sit down like any good employee and you plan out uh, your vacation. <laughs> when are you going to take your vacation? When and you're then, going sick. And then we plan out when you're going sick. <laughs> you're looking at the whole calendar. says, okay, I'm taking my vacation. So this way, you know, you give you certain, a certain amount of gaps. Yeah, I it never did it like that. You were uh, thinking ahead. I never really did it like that. I used to just wing it as I went along. Uh-huh. Of course, mine was a lot related to overtime, too. I didn't like doing it until uh-huh. I was capped out, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. This, this dude, every day he went to work, he was looking to make money. <laughs> he was making money the minute he... He already had his collar lined up by phone. Uh-huh. Be on the corner of 112 and 2. Did your wife work? Yeah, my wife's an attorney. No, but I'm saying back then. No, she was in law school. At the time. Yeah, she was. So it was important for you to try yeah, to maximize. Little, yeah, I had two little kids. She was in law school. It was up Detective to you. Pat had to make the coin. He had to bring home yeah, that well, bacon. Well, there's, there's, listen, there's some guys that, I don't know why, they just, they love the overtime, but you had to, like, let's say your wife is a lawyer, and you're still doing 40 hours a month, and you got two kids. Uh, really? Right. No, oh. she was in law school. She wasn't even he, an he lived. Yet. He lived at the squad. He totally check the check back then. It was check the check. Yeah. He used to cash his check too. He never like got direct deposit. And I used to say, "What is wrong with you, man?" A lot of guys. Why don't you guys. get direct deposit? He goes, "I want to see the knot. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hold it for yeah. a day." I go, "You're gonna get a knot in the back of your head as you come out of a check cash with some cock diesel fucking <laughs> cocksucky graduate's gonna suck a bunch of you to the back of the head. Oh. <laughs> you got a knot around. That'll be the knot." <laughs> <laughs> Some guys need it. To, they need to feel the cash. Yes. The things uh, that you go through on this job, though, you know, the busting the bulls, right? Oh my oh. god! So you had the extra locker too, huh? Yeah, I had like three or four lockers. Three or four lockers. Yeah, I had three upstairs, there. and then I had one downstairs in the gym. You had to put that blow up doll in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> You have oh, guys there. leave, you know. Guys leave, yeah, they yeah, retire. Yeah. But new guys come in, and they can't get it. They, yeah, well, if a new guy came in, I would give it up. Detective Pat's got four lockers. <laughs> <laughs> See, Detective Pat, he's got a locker. Oh, PAA had a locker back yeah. there, a female PAA. She had a locker. He had locker. one of those Poland spring bottles with change up to the top. How much was in that? Did you uh, ever count like that out? It was like 1100 bucks or something yeah. like that. I have a Poland spring bottle uh, in my... Uh, what, filled with change? It's, it's not full. It's like this a was quarter. full to the top. No, mine I'm was a pretzel. My... Mine was a pretzel large. Uh, it was big, And it was 1,100 in there, huh? Yeah. I'm figuring I got like two or 300 in mine right now. And I got one at home, too. And he had gotten that for his communion. <laughs> <laughs> I was sorry when TD Bank... Uh, I know. What kind of bullshit uh, is that? You can't count that shit by hand. Why would you no. close that down? Everybody, no. everybody goes there. They, Plus, they, you pay they a take fee. Like, they take like 11% or 12% or something like that. They take a Whatever big, it is, no, gives a no, shit. Take free. half of it. I just oh, it's not free it. anymore. They hit you for like no, 10 No, TD, TD Bank, Bank if you had free. an account oh, there, okay. it was for free. But you could come in there from an outside branch and pay the fee. Wow. So you you had $14 in their bank. Yeah. And you used the machine. Yeah. So now there's another bank, Navy. Navy Federal, uh-huh. they're putting the machines in there. I'm going to open up and count there. Yeah, I got to. <laughs> he's, he's a Navy guy. He can use the Navy bank no, for free. No, they're going to have the free machines. 
Good bullshit But I think account. you could, there's certain, I, th- I know I was in Washington Heights and I saw one of them. It was in like a check cashing place. They had a change machine there. I, I, I know where it is. I want to cash in before I go on my vacation right now. I got two jugs. I figure I probably have like 400 bucks there, 500 bucks. Where are you going to? Florida this time. Oh, nice. Yeah, my mom's down there. She's getting old. I'm going to go chill with her. You do some shows down there? No. How long no, you going for? I'm, just a week. I'm way, way we past We should do that. an episode of Off the Cuff. If I'm, going, if I'm going on vacation, I go on vacation. Yeah. I, I, for so many years, you go someplace, you look to get up on stage right. and, and, and do comedy there. Now it's like, nah, man, it's my vacation. I'm not, unless the money, like if, if the money's going to pay for right. a portion of my vacation, then I do it. Like I used to go to Ocean City and I would do uh, the town next over had a show. Right. It's, you know, 400 bucks. It pays for you know, a couple of days. Ocean City, Maryland? Yeah. Never been there. I heard it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a good place. I'm surprised with kids that you never went yeah. there. We used to go to Cape Cod every year. Everybody's got a place, you know. Your place. Yeah. Is, some people go to Cape Cod. Some people go to Cape May. Some people go to Ocean Detective City. Pat goes LBI. to the East River houses. <laughs> LBI is a big one. Uh, what's that? Long Beach Island. Long Beach, oh, Long Island, Beach yeah. Island. Yeah, that's nice over there. I went there last he year. He likes for to a day. watch the Hellgate Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Look, kids. <laughs> Likes to see the current in that East River and the never work, gets old. Whirlpools. Likes to see the bodies roll around in that whirlpool. How old are your kids now? Uh, my son's going to be 29 in April, my oldest one. His son's on the job. He left the NYPD as a state trooper now. Oh, really? Yeah. He left the PD to become a state trooper? Yeah, he did five years in the 10th, and then he switched out. How does he year. like the troopers? He hated it when he first got there. He likes it now, though. What, what, why is he like, what does he like about it? The schedule's better and... Uh, they do know, 12 hours? Yeah. 12-hour shifts? Yeah, it's more of a gentleman's job. You get more respect and stuff, you know, and the money's better. Uh-huh. So, I remember when we used to make more. Yeah. I actually yeah. took the both tests. The troopers make more, huh? Yeah. I took both tests, and um, when I got called, the NYPD called me first, but I took the trooper test first. And uh, at the time, uh, the NYPD was making more money. And plus, I didn't have to go live in a barracks. Six, I was just right. newly married. And then the troopers wound up going ahead when we got the three zeros. Remember that? <laughs> zero, zero, zero. Yeah. Our, our, our friend, Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. He you forget us that. Up. Zeros for heroes. Yeah, he got right. us. He, Koch got gave us our, the six, 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 right? Yeah. And then he screwed us. <laughs> Mayor Koch was the best. Six, six, and six. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Dinkins wasn't bad either. We got razors, and crime was out of control under Dinkins. That's why he, he was a good man. Oh, yeah. yeah. He didn't want you to do anything. He didn't want you to do anything. Yeah. Plus, he had he started that Safe City, Safe Streets, which hired yeah. a lot of cops. Yeah. But, man, it's a shame, man. We we come to a, an end of a second hour, and I, I'll be honest with you. I could talk to him forever. Yeah. He, we this could do some more episodes with him, man. EOT, man. We might have to have you back again. Oh, he's he, yeah, let me know. he never gets old, man. This guy's no, no, got no, more no. stories than <laughs> grim fairy tales. <laughs> Detective Pat, man. We could, this Detective is uh, Pat. I bet you if he walked up the street in Third Avenue in East Hall and people would be screaming out the projects, <laughs> Detective Pat's back! Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's another it's legendary... It's an odd relationship de- that you develop with people. Another yeah. legendary <laughs> detective there, Blondie, right? Yeah. Blondie. He you was bump, there sometimes you bump into people that you call it in the past. Oh, it's oh, a yeah. weird thing. It happened to me in yeah, Home Depot. Weird, this yeah. guy, he's like, hey, uh, you don't remember me, huh? And I'm like, oh, shit. And I'm like, I'm with my kids at the time. And he was with his kids. And yeah. he tells his kids right in front of me, yeah, if it wasn't this for this guy right now, daddy, daddy wouldn't be the person he is today. And he goes, thank you so much. You helped me out. I helped you out. Yeah. Went to prison for a couple of years. <laughs> oh, help you out. Put me in the joint. I always like that when they say thank you. But he cleaned up. You know? He cleaned yeah. up. He, whatever he did in there, he came out. He's a new man. Yeah. So some people need that. Uh, Absolutely. Need a, a good interrogation. Funny. A little time in the cell. You know, make that peace. We had, I was looking for a guy real quick for a robbery, so me and my partner went over to Taft Houses to grab the guy. So uh, he didn't know that he was ID'd, so I knock on the door. I go, hey, how you doing? I got to talk to you. Can you come back to the precinct? I wanted to go go easy, you know, on the DL yeah. with him, you know what I mean? So he goes, oh, can you do me a favor? So I go, yeah, what's up? He goes, can you cuff me so people don't think I'm snitching? Yeah. So I go, yeah, sure. <laughs> so I cuff him up. He was really a collar, yeah, though, yeah. right? But I was trying to do it nice. And those cuffs never came off. <laughs> so I cuff yeah, him yeah. up. I bring him down. You ever been in the two, three where the cell yeah, of is? Of course, yeah. So I put him in the cell, and the cell is like right there, and, and all the desks are out here. 
So he's in the cell. So like seven hours later, he goes, hey, when do I get to leave? <laughs> Everybody in the room started years. laughing. <laughs> Everybody started laughing. <laughs> well, this guy's really put, put, he's really going a long way with this gag. <laughs> Detective Pat fucked me. And you know what, oh man? My God. I, I usually like to leave the show on one of my brilliant ideas. And I just thought of it right now. When you get really good at confessions and stuff like that or investigating... I mean, obviously, you can be a private investigator, but the department should be able to utilize your brain. Like, you should be able to be, like, a, uh, an interviewer on reserve. Like, you know, you, you're in the bullpen. And oh, every yeah. once in a while, we, you know what? Call up Detective Pat. Yeah. Pat, Pat, put the collar on. Come on here. Get a confession out of this guy. <laughs> That's right. I should have went to the DA squad. That's right. He yeah, could have. Well, we definitely want to have you back, Detective Pat. This was great. This I was had a wonderful time. time. I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Billy, Mark, thank you. This was yeah, fantastic, man. man. Every time you. we have him on, again. I, you know. Yeah. This... And Andrew, or, uh, Andrew, thank our you. engineer. And a quiet engineer. He's great. He's in a thing right now where he can't talk. He's like It's like a Buddhist thing, and he's yeah. taking an oath. He'll tell no, stories no later on. Don't worry. <laughs> for uh, six, 60 years, right? No speech. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for tuning in. Uh, this is Off the Cuff, man. And uh, we are EOT. Thanks a lot for the invite, guys. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks for coming. You're always welcome.